Hey, my Travel Ones podcast fam, look at that. Courtney Rich, how are you today, Courtney? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, Cake by Courtney. What a, what a novel concept. Easy, easy, <laughs> e- easy to remember for you, I guess. There you go. Right? A little alliteration there. <laughs> exactly. How did, I'm just kind of really curious how you started the cake industry and the cake business and how that all, I mean, how do you get, I'm going to make cakes today. <laughs> right? It definitely doesn't happen overnight. I mean, my background is actually in broadcast journalism. Um, I worked after college at a television station and I pretty quickly jumped into media consulting. And okay. with the firm that I was working with, I started moderating focus groups. And I would travel the country to talk to consumers about new television shows, about talent, about websites. I mean, really anything media related. I was I was into and, and traveling the country several times a month um, to go do research for our clients. And four years into that, you know, I had gotten married and, and we started a family. So I had my son and he was turning one. So it was his first birthday. And I wanted to do something big, like, you know, all new moms were, were ready to throw a <laughs> yeah. Pinterest worthy party. And I totally was ready to tackle it. And I decided to make a cake from scratch and I, I kind of did it to impress my in-laws and my friends. I'd never done a cake from scratch. I grew up baking with my mom and, and being in the kitchen and always loved being in the kitchen with my family, whether it was for dinner time or we were making something. It was just a place that um, felt comfortable. It felt peaceful and, and just really brought with it a lot of memories and laughter. And so, you know, I felt comfortable in the kitchen, but really had never tackled anything that like Martha Stewart did as far as a, a layered <laughs> yeah. cake and Ina Garten kind of thing. But I thought, okay, I'm going to impress my in-laws. They're really good cooks. And I was like, I, I got to do something from scratch. So I grabbed a Bon Appetit magazine and picked out one of their cake recipes. Um, it was a, a peanut butter cake with chocolate frosting. And I made it for this party. And it, lo- it looked awful. I mean, it was a train wreck as far <laughs> as how it looked. Uh, but it tasted amazing. Like, That's really, nice. I could not believe that it just tasted so great. It was so fun. And I feel like the foodie culture was really picking up around that time. And we were living in Santa Monica, California, and we were around a lot of good restaurants. So it just kind of was a fun, it became a fun hobby. I was like, oh, I really like doing this and, and became my creative outlet. And so when I wasn't traveling for work um, or writing reports at home and, and, or wasn't, you know, my son maybe was napping or something, I would find an excuse to get in the kitchen and just create something and bake and, um, I, I grew up doing sports and art and I always loved being able to do something creative. So this all of a sudden became that new creative outlet for me. And I, I kind of, you know, we were talking earlier, I, I kind of have lost that moment or that kind of space in my life um, with working and being married and, and starting a family. You know, you kind of don't even realize until after the fact that all of a sudden you've lost a little part of yourself. Yeah. Um, And I don't say that hopefully, like in a a really bad way. I mean, all these other things that I was doing um, were great and were happy and things that I was really proud of. But I feel like we each need a little something for ourselves that is just ours. You know, we can share it with people, but the time to have this hobby, um, I think, is important for each of us. It's our own little space and. Um, anyway, so it became this hobby and it turned into a, a real passion of mine. And the next six years, while I was still working, um, Weston was getting older and I had my daughter. Um, I still was just really loving getting in the kitchen and just now experimenting, teaching myself. It became a new classroom situation where it was, but I was just, you know, looking um, online for help. I was doing all the research and it was really yeah. trial and error, which was really fun. A lot of failures to be able to create some successes. And, you know, so each each fail was worth it because I learned something new and I was able to grow and then try again and do better. Um, and then, gosh, it was four years ago, I decided to start my blog. And, and really, a lot of the research I did in media kind of helped give me the confidence to, to start a blog because I certainly felt like um, the market was super saturated. And I'm sure you felt the same way as you're starting your podcast, you know, like, oh, gosh, so many other people are doing this already. How am I going to stand out? You know, you definitely have those moments of self-doubt, and especially with food space. I mean, it was – it's super saturated, but there's so much great content out there. And I thought back to all these focus groups I did, and I would test television shows, some of them really bad. Thank heavens they never made it on the air. 
But anytime we tested a really good show, all these busy consumers who said, oh, my gosh, I don't really have a lot of time for TV, but here's the few shows that I make time for, they would maybe say before they watch the show, I'm not really sure I have time for a new show. But if it was really good content, they would make time for it. They would always say, you know what, I really liked it. I'll figure out how to fit it in my schedule because I want to watch it. And I thought, okay, if it's good content that I can they'll create, people it. will make yeah. room for it, and they'll find it, and, you know, and I've got a chance. And so with that, I got started, and I really was always focused on the baking and how to make a great tasting cake. But along the way, especially in that first year, and taking the pictures and having Instagram and social media be so visual, I was teaching myself then how to decorate and take better pictures. And what was so important for me is to share it with other people so that they feel like, they could do it too. I was never going to open up a bakery, um, but instead wanted to give people the tools, the knowledge, and the confidence to try it themselves because I feel like it's, it's so rewarding to be able to um, tackle something that we don't think we can really do or we've never done before and then prove to ourselves, hey, I'm pretty good at this. This is fun. You know, uh, the, the tool part, I, I, know zero, I know less than you did before you made your first cake about baking. Yeah. Yeah. My mom my growing up my mom was the baker. So yeah. she made she made the cookies, she made the cupcakes, the cakes, all that. So I just sat back and ate them. Um Which is also fun. I like that too. Oh, mm -hmm. oh yeah. But your the tools that you came up with are unbelievable. And you know, I, I was showing my sister uh, my mom passed away <clears throat> excuse me, a few years ago. But I showed my sister your your, your site and you know, I'm hey, I'm gonna be talking to the store, I'm really excited. And I go, look, look at all the stuff. And she's like, how did she make that? And we're looking, look, and I go, look at the little the little groove thing and, you know, the turn. Yeah. And, and, and she's like, oh, mom would love this. I go, I know. Because <laughs> you, you came up with some really cool tools. Thank you. I mean, they're, they're not necessarily uh, um, super innovative. I mean, there's been, it's been 10 years of me using other tools, other so you, products. Yeah that I didn't think were quite right. And so in this last year and a half, I just felt like, man, we could really improve these because as I've played around with it and done all my trial and error, and now I've been teaching classes for um, just about three years, travel to teach the classes. We do a lot of them in Salt Lake City. Um, What's the I, name just I, realized, I, don't like, to, I don't want to butcher that name. What's yes, name it's place? Gigi. It's Orson Gigi in Salt yeah. Lake. It's okay. um, a family-run business. It's been there since 1945. It's incredible. It's a staple of Salt Lake. I feel like it's a, a destination. It's it's a toy store for adults almost. But <laughs> I, you know, I was just like, how my whole goal. I mean, one of my goals, I guess I should say, this whole time has been how do I make things as simple as possible for other people to learn um, and to apply as they try to do this, so they don't feel like they're looking at a picture saying, oh, I could never do that. I want them to look at something I make and say, oh, I can do that. I can't wait to try that. And tools play a big part in how easy or hard it can be to um, to decorate a cake. And so just over the years of trying tools that I kind of liked or didn't like at all, um, I created my own line of cake scrapers, cake spatulas, piping bags, aprons, and we have more coming out. Um, awesome. Also, I mean, for me, I was like, I like pretty things. I want it to look nice, and I never found – tools that I thought, man, I could just leave this on my counter and it would be an accessory because it just looks like it's a, it's a beautiful piece. Yes, <laughs> it's just a beautiful piece. So, um, yeah, we just launched the line this year and yeah. we did a cake box subscription service where kind of like HelloFresh or, or Blue Apron, um, you would get pre-measured ingredients um, delivered to your door for one of my cakes. So, you know, just kind of making the process even easier. Like, here's everything you need. You don't need to worry about measuring. Just grab some things from your fridge, like your eggs and your buttermilk, and yeah. here's the instructions, and you're ready to go. Well, you know, just so you know, beyond you inspiring other people that can bake and all that, I think your story is inspiring. I mean, just like, you know, I mean, it's inspiring to me because it's very, very similar. You know, where, where right. you're starting something, and, you know, and you, I'm sure – when you started this, especially at, at the at your son's first birthday party, you weren't going, "Hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna be on no. Good Morning America and Oprah and <laughs> for making cakes." Yeah, that's my future. That's right. no way, no way. You never start something new. I mean, I shouldn't say never, but like a hobby like that. It's not like that was my intention. For me, 
it was it was giving myself an outlet um, and finding a happy, peaceful place that I really needed. And there were some personal things I was going through at the time too. Um, that for me, it was just filling a void. It was therapy. It was it was helping me um, just personally, and it was fun to share it with people. So it was it was interesting to see it evolve, just because um, it was purely kind of selfish at the beginning. You know, I knew yeah. that I needed to do it for myself. Um, and then I just loved sharing it with other people and I loved learning and teaching myself and it just became this passion and, and all of a sudden all this learning and 10 years later, it's like, wait, I'm, I guess I'm an expert at this. I've been doing this for a little while and I may not have (laughs) gone to a culinary school, but I've, I've certainly, um, spent a lot of time researching, studying, learning, and just putting all, um, the things I've learned to work and practicing and getting in the kitchen and trying and, and figuring things out just firsthand. I think there's no better way to learn. I, I talk yeah. to people who are like, okay, I've watched a lot of videos. I just, I'm, I don't know what else I need to do before I get started. And I said, nothing. You just need to get started. You know, yeah. you just yeah. actually have to get your hands dirty and try it. I had a friend tell me that about my podcast. And yeah. I, I, but my, my first guest was Hunter Carey. He's a two-time world champ uh, steer wrestler, cowboy. Mm-hmm. And I've known him for six, seven years. And yeah. And I and so I was at, at a rodeo at a bar in Vegas, and I go, um, "Hey man, I'm thinking about putting this together. Would you be a guest?" And he goes, "Yeah." And I'm like, <laughs> "Okay." And like he didn't, Tricky. you know, I was hoping he'd say no. You know what I mean? Cause yeah, because like, you're a little nervous. You're like, if you say yes, that means there's another door do open that I have to do it. And, and so I knew nothing about anything, and so I called him up, and we recorded it, and it was terrible, and I haven't listened to it since. Uh, it's, it's my yeah. no, it's still one of my top two rated shows yeah and and no i know right you just have to dive into the deep end sometimes rather than yeah. just walk in the shallow end and gradually get wet you got to just dive in because i think there's it forces you to learn a little bit more a little bit quicker right than rather taking your times and putting your toes in the water and just kind of you just got to go for it um, i remember the first time my boss when i was doing consulting you know, mentioned to me, hey, I think you'd be really good at moderating focus groups. And I said, great, yeah, like, you know, I've obviously seen the videos that we would bring in and I would write reports for people. And he's like, so I've already been writing that same conversation. He said to me, so I've set up some focus groups for you to moderate in two days. And I was like, I'm, I'm sorry, what? And he said, yeah, they're here in California and we'll go down and you'll do it. And I was like, okay. And he's like, so write the discussion guide and, you know, yada, yada. And they just threw me into the deep end. And it was the greatest way to learn. I, and I would yeah. never ask him to do it differently. And I think it applies to so much in our lives because I think um, we we build on our, our fears and our doubts when we take too long to try something yeah. new. And when we just put our toes in, it's just allowing the fear and the self-doubt to build rather than just getting in and trying it. And if we fail, we fail. I mean, it's more of a lesson than a failure, right? Because that first podcast, how much did you learn? You know, so much that you were then able to apply to the next podcast. Well, I, and to I the learned next I needed podcast. to get better. <laughs> yes, right? I, and then I literally you went, figure out God, what you I'm, need to do. Yeah, I literally went, man, I'm really bad at this. I need to get better if I'm going to do this again. <laughs> so, yeah. You know, I, but I, for, for me, Courtney, I kind of got called out on my, on my BS because yeah. growing up, I had told my daughters, you, you know, apply yourself. You can do it. You know, just go. And, right. and my daughter, my younger daughter, uh, while she was in college, applied for some internships that she had no right to get, and she got them. Uh-huh. And so her first job ever in her life was um, working as a social media intern for Jared Leto. Oh, wow. And then went on tour with, the, with his band and toured the United States uh, doing the social media stuff on there. And then mm-hmm. – um, and, and I remember she came home, and she goes, hey – I want to apply. Do you think I should apply? And I'm like, yeah, you have to. Why not? Yeah. Worst, worst case scenario, you know, you don't, they don't say, you know, they don't reply to you, but you get to say you applied. Yeah. yeah. She applies. And they're like, oh my God, uh, they want to interview me. And I'm like, yeah, go. You know, worst case scenario, yeah. you get to say you, 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 apply, you interviewed. She got the job. She comes home. She goes, oh my God, should I take it? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Well, I- <laughs> I grew up, um, my dad is a huge basketball fan. I played basketball growing up. And when we would practice or just, I mean, not even in high school, but even after that, 
he would always quote, and this is so funny, but he would always give me the quote, you know, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. And I literally, I kid you not, thought that that was his quote. Like, I thought that was a <laughs> Steve original. Until I was an adult, and that's embarrassing, I'm going to admit it, and my husband, I think, at one point was like, you know your dad didn't coin that quote. And I was like, <laughs> what? And I said, oh, it must be Michael Jordan, and because that was, you know, our favorite player. And Ryan goes, no, it was Wayne Gretzky. And I was like, are you kidding me? I mean, it was so funny, but it's literally the, the mantra I live by. You miss 100% of the shots you yeah. do not take. If you don't even try, you're going to miss it. When I was asked to, um, earlier this year, I had an editor from Oprah Magazine call and ask if I could ship a cake out to them for them to taste test for their summer favorite foods issue, wow. which was in August. And so this was back in early March of this year. And um, I just launched my cake subscription box. And I said, well, oh, yeah, I've got my cake subscription box. I can send you a box. And they're like, yeah, but we would like to taste the cake yeah, that goes We don't want to make it, yeah. Yes, we don't want to make it. And they said, you know, this is like on a Thursday. They said, do you have someone out here in New York that can um, to make it for you and, and bring it to us? And I said, um, you know, let me get back to you. And I got off the phone, and I booked a red-eye flight on Monday night for the next week to get me there on Tuesday, and called her back and said, I, you know what, I'm actually, I've got to come out there for work anyway, which was a total lie. Yeah, I didn't yeah. need to go out there, you know, and I just didn't want to make it seem like I was, you know, too desperate, but yeah, I yeah. said, I'm going to, I'll bring you the cake myself, and, and she couldn't believe it, but um, I showed up in the city at 8 a.m., I had two batches of everything to put together, like pre-made so I could just assemble it. I took everything to Hearst Magazine. I pitched them for an hour. I left my cake, one for them to taste test and one um, to use for a photo shoot if they decided they liked it. And I remember explaining to my son, who's almost 11, he said, so what are you going to New York for this time? And I was yeah. telling him and trying to explain to him who Oprah was and what a big deal this was. And I just said, and he goes, well, what if you don't get in the magazine? That's a lot of work, mom. You know, he's smart enough to realize how much money and, and effort yeah. goes into that. And it was a 24 hour trip or less than that. And I said, you know what? I have to at least take the shot. I don't yeah. know if I'm going to get it, but if I don't even try, I think that's worse. Right. And, and I don't want to live with that regret. And, and we talk about grandpa's quote that is actually Wayne Gretzky's. <laughs> and, and um, you know, and for me, that's just got to, it's kind of have, you know, we've got to live our lives. It's just, you've got to just go for it. You don't want to live with the regret of what if I would have tried this, you know? And yeah. I could have never imagined even four years ago when I started what this went to. I mean, I had some, some goals and some dreams and they've just evolved and they've grown because what this has turned into has grown and evolved even more than I think I could have really hoped for four years ago. I, 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 I'm not there yet, but I, I'm starting to understand the feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's a good feeling. And it just, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of setbacks and nothing is, is easy. I mean, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it with us. But I think when you've got the real passion for it, the failures, the setbacks, the hiccups, the mistakes, they hurt, but they don't keep you down. You know, you're able to pick yourself back up and say, okay, I got to rethink this. What are the changes I'm going to make? How can I go about this now? Because I believe in this so much and I believe in my mission and what I want to do that I'm going to make it work. And I've just got to be flexible in the way I think sometimes and the way I plan. And, and I'm only asking this next question because I, I think we're very similar. How, yeah. how, how much help has your husband been towards this with you? Because my wife uh, has been unmeasurable. Yeah, he's been incredibly supportive. He has a full-time job. He works a ton. He always has. He did business consulting and then went to business school at UCLA and works, you know, 80-hour weeks. And yeah. um, so when we can, I mean, we get together. You know, we have time on the weekends that we brainstorm and we help. So he's been, like, incredibly supportive. And especially as I've started the e-commerce side of things, um, he's been able to step in and help me kind of plan some financial models and, and plan in that way. But as far as, like, a team, I mean, I just barely hired a few months ago an assistant baker that helps me prep cakes for television shows or photo shoots, just kind of the extra stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a design firm that I work with on my products. But, I mean, I think I only have one employee, to be honest. Yeah. 
But, but yeah. you know, I, I think that's so, what's so interesting with, with today's world. I mean, you know, go back 10 years ago, and you, the business you have now wouldn't have existed because, you know, the right. internet wasn't full steam. That There's no, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. Facebook and Instagram and, I mean. You, yeah, you, it was such you, you a different market. Influencer. Yeah. Right. And that's the exactly. same way. If you would have gone back 10 years ago and said, hey, Pete, you're going to have a podcast that's going to be listened to in over 50 countries in the world. I'll be like, get the, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah, what I know. talking about? Isn't it so cool? It's yeah. So cool. It's, it's so inspiring, though, because. You know, I'll, I'll talk to someone like you in any other space and, and just the things, that, the way things have evolved, you know, because I think so many of us, we had these other jobs, you know, nine to five that we're, we're doing in these other roles that we're playing. But each of us has so much to offer. And it's incredible yeah. what we can do for each other and for ourselves when we decide to share it and decide to do something with it. And I think that's my favorite part about social media is the way that we can learn from one another and be inspired by one another. And it's such a great tool for us to use um, to help each other out all across the world, which is the, one of the coolest things to me, you know, to get a message from someone in India making one of my cakes yeah. or in Norway. You know, you just, it's like, wow, we are all connected what you, because yeah. of this common passion. And and thanks to, to social media and the Internet, we, we're virtual friends. We're making cake together. We're doing this together and inspiring one another. I, I had a, a, a listener uh, send me a, a screenshot of her car, or of her car radio uh-huh. in uh-huh. Brazil, and, and my podcast was on the on the screen in, in Portuguese. Yeah, and I'm like, whoa, wow, it's that's, neat. That's kind of that just became real. Yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. When, when you're traveling now, what, what are you what are you listening to? Like what do you, how do you fill your time? Are you just focused on work and trying to get that stuff done, um, or do you a little shut bit. down? It's a little bit of everything. Okay. I think it's hard to completely shut down. So on flights, I feel like there's a little bit of everything going on. It's finishing some of my work. It's some tuning out to, you know, a movie. Um, yeah. When I'm in my car driving around Salt Lake to and from my classes, or if I've got carpool or something, I like to do podcasts in my kitchen too. Um, I'm a big fan of How I Built This by Guy Raz on the PBS podcast. I also really like All In and then some fun ones too. I mean, I, Jack Shepard has a great one. And, <laughs> yeah. and so it's kind of a little bit of mix because then sometimes I also just want some, some music and, and just to kind of tune out a little bit. But, yeah, I like to mix it up, I guess. Do you remember back in your media consulting days when you were traveling? What did mm-hmm. you do then when you are flying? Because, I mean, I often was doing reports. If I was leaving yeah. a city, because we were trying to do, we'd often be out like for three or four days and try to fit in, you know, three different cities. So I'd leave, you know, New York and I'd be writing a report for the focus groups on that one as I was going to the next city and trying to get to Dallas or something. So on those ones, if I wasn't writing a report, I think I was so fried or, or tired because it was such quick turnaround and the hours were kind of crazy that I was either sleeping or just watching a movie on the plane. I remember. I mean, I was the same way. And yeah. Now it's now that you have the phone and and yeah. your, your laptop and all that, you can actually get some stuff done. But back then, it was just like you had to sit there and kind of just do nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, read the you read catch the, up uh, on sleep. Read the passages magazine over and over again and over and over again. Well, the, the sky the sky mall mag and look at all this stuff. Yeah, that we're never gonna get. Well, don't so you remember when it was like you only got one movie option? It was the overhead movie. Yeah, made, yeah. Oh, I can't even imagine that anymore. I just, I want my, I, I love to fly Delta. And so, you know, I love my personal screen. I get to pick movies or if I watch it, you know, on my computer, same thing. I think they've got yeah. a good entertainment system there, which is always, you know, I feel like there's so many movies I get to catch up on, some I never get to see at home. Well, I, I, it's like trying to explain my daughters what a map is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same way. It's like, I have to right, keep them out of right. I go, you might need to, use a map at some point. I don't know why, but it might come up. Here's how you use it. Here's, Here's how you G, do it. Here's G6. Yeah. Go to G. Uh-huh. Go down. Come over to 6. You know, it's a, I, I look uh, at, you know, because I fly southwest a lot, and yeah. they offer a lot of Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi. And so, like, yeah. on my phone, I'm watching live TV. You know, I can watch a football game or a baseball game while I'm flying to Denver or wherever I'm going. Oh, to. it's so different. It's yeah. cool. How do you watch yeah. live, live sports in the middle of the air? Because you, your your kids are still small, mm-hmm. do you have any any 
rituals with your with your husband, meaning for me, I'm on the road, and so if I'm gone for a week, every week that I'm home, my wife and I have a date night. Yeah. We, we have to have a date night once a week if I'm home. It makes up for yeah. the, the weeks that I'm gone. Do you guys oh, have anything sure. like that? or? Yeah, I mean, and I feel like sometimes we actually have to schedule it. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. schedule so busy, and he travels a bit, too that I'll even email his admin and say, hey, can you block this time for Ryan? Because I don't even know if I, you know, sometimes you say it 100 times to each other and oh, you don't write it down. It's not put in the calendar. You forget about it. It doesn't happen. So, yeah, and you know what? Sometimes it's even like, all right, let's just, let's think of maybe to Avery for a half an hour. Let's just go walk the neighborhood real quick and um, and just have a minute together because it's so easy to come back from a trip um, and just get into the hustle of being a mom and having to do the things for the kids, the things in the house, that it's really easy for a partnership of husband and wife or whoever your partner may be to get put on the back burner. And yeah. that's one of the most important ones. I mean, it's, it's central to making the family run um, as smoothly as possible. And if it's not, you know, being taken care of, just like your car, you know, continual regular maintenance, um, things start to to fall apart. So well, yeah, absolutely. I, I found that out. You know, like we talked about it, but when my daughters went off, went off to college and, and no yeah. longer lived in the house, it was like, oh, okay. I guess they don't need me every minute of every day now. <laughs> so we'll yeah, it's a, and it's a different phase for you now. Yeah, totally. And yeah. It, you know, and so I'm trying to take care of the relationships <clears throat> that I have now, even though I'm traveling more, even yeah. more. Yeah, and you just have to do it in different ways and adjust, and it's a different phase of life now. Yeah. Thank you so much for the time. I know you're you're running busy, just like everyone. Uh, what's the best way for, for my listeners to, to reach out and find out what you're doing? So on Instagram, it's Cake by Courtney. Uh, you'll see it a lot there. Um, and then my, I have two websites. I've got CakeByCourtney.com, which has got all the tips and recipes. I share everything I know on there. And then my products are sold on shop.cakebycourtney.com. And if you like mint chocolate chip, that, that cake you did on, on your website has made me hungry. Thank you. I've got a couple of good, good mint ones on there. There's a lot of fun recipes. And, you know, I just always tell people if they're making their first cake, just find one that excites them and, and that they're really um, excited for that looks yummy to them. And then no matter how hard it is or how much time it takes, they don't really care because they're just really thrilled to be able to make it and to eat it. <laughs> exactly. And I'll make sure I, I put all your links and connects on, on my website as well. So Thank you. They can definitely follow up. And I, I, I would imagine the holiday season is busy for you. Um, but, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of content to create yeah. um, around each holiday. So it's fun. But I really like that because I do love focusing on the the recipes and the and the taste and the flavor of things, but it's fun too around the holidays to just do a little bit more on the creative side as far as how they look and the design. Yeah. yeah that's it's going to be great to, to follow up on you. So again, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great holidays. Okay. Thank you so much. Take care. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Courtney. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.